Okay, well, I joined Peter out here and put some of my paintings out, so we might as well talk about them as long as I'm here just looking at things. Here we see a general look of some of them, and we'll do that first, then we'll talk about them one by one. Okay, we got a bunch of them right here, too. That's kind of nice. frame. I like this HD. Not quite all of them. We missed one right on the edge. Maybe I'll move that one over. These two really go together. They're acrylic on canvas board called Fire and Water. Fire and Water. And they were nice. I was experimenting with the idea of just painting the background and no uh, object. You know, in Western uh, perception, we tend to have figure ground. We're very gestalt-oriented with a single object on the ground. And this is an, uh, an attempt to just draw the background. And uh, I really like these two. This one is called Man and the Mirror. And it's an assembly art piece a little round mirror and a collection of stones, pebbles. I like to pick up unique pebbles I see on the ground and just on cardboard. I also like cardboard, just a plain piece of cardboard that has an interesting character. This one is called Jack of Spades and uh, I did a series based on playing cards. We have a few of them here today. Just painted canvas board black and then glued different objects on there. Uh, in this case, the spade is a knife and the jack is a knave. So it's kind of the joker of spades, like uh, a mobster, a gangster, gangbanger, old fashioned 1950s style. The Yakuza, you got the fingers there, you got the knife, you got the sterile band aid, the little monkey getting stuck like a stuck gig. It's a jack of spades. This one's called the Red Pyramids. Calder did a series of pyramids that I like. This is similar but a little different. And uh, that's about it. It's done acrylic on canvas board. And you can kind of see a procession going into or coming out of the big pyramid. And I really like this one. This one is kind of Halloween themed. It's called Wolfman or Goat Boy. And uh, it's acrylic on canvas board again. I had a fun time painting it. It's green, like a comic book horror green. And originally it was a Wolfman, but it's got horns like a Goat Boy. And uh, might have something in its mouth. And it kind of has a look like it's looking right through you, right past you. And you can't quite tell whether it's Wolfman or Goat Boy. This is called the Dark Hill, the Dark Hill. It's painted acrylic on canvas board with a wood frame. And uh, I always envision it looking up the hill into the sky, but a friend of mine, Emmy, pictured it looking down the hill into the dark water. And it's a lot more scary looking down the hill into the dark water. So it could go either way. And this is also, uh, Gestalt painting of just painting a background without a foreground object. This is another one in the series of playing cards. This one's called the Three of Spades. I spent forever working on this one. You can't tell it, but this one really took a lot of work. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. And the spade is a knife, and the three is the trinity. And there you see the Trinity at the bottom with the little cartoon. It's all about fighting. This one's about fighting, but it's also comedy and uh, valor. This 
one is called the Halloween tree. And uh, this is a Halloween picture. And you can see the bright orange sky, like a huge fire, a sheet of flame, with the house in the background, with the tree in the foreground. And bats or spirits are coming out of the house for a night of haunting, for a Halloween night of haunting. And it's just kind of fun and cartoonish. And this one is called Mr. Basket Face. Mr. Basket Face is a basket case. And this was painted with a sponge brush. So you get the square feeling of weaving the uh, wicker basket. And if you look not too closely, you can see a face in there as he's looking out, trapped in his rectilineal basket world. And this is a small assembly art piece. This is called Delusions of Grandeur. Delusions of Grandeur. And it's eight little chili peppers, ornamental dried chili peppers, and a, and a smug little figurine at the bottom of the frame. It's another uh, assembly art piece in the playing card series. This one's called Five of Hearts. And it's about childhood, and about the whimsy and fun and idealism of childhood. And those are crayons I found that have been used, five crayons. And there's five stones, like when you're a kid and you throw stones, you throw stones through windows because you're joking around, and the little red jewel that's uh, the passion, the joy of life, and of course the monkey. You know, the little monkey. When you're a kid, you're a little monkey. And I really like this one, Five of Hearts. Here's an assembly art piece called Facing the Fear. Facing the Fear. You see that little boy there has his eye poked out. He actually was part of another assembly art piece that I had shown in a coffee house that was partially dismantled by enthusiastic patrons and he had his eye scraped off. So I replaced it on that other one, but then I made this one. You see the big spiders and the implements and the ticket admit one, because you're the only one that can face your own fears, and you have to conquer your own fears. And he's got the trident, the olive fork, to protect him. Although he's naked, and you have to be naked when you face your fears. And uh, frequently, what's the worst that can happen? So. Here we have an assembly art piece called Three Dried Siamese Cherries. And that's what they are. I got these three uh, Siamese cherries in a um, bucket of cherries. And I put them out on this board and just dried them out. It's also called Three of Hearts. Three of Hearts, Three Dried Cherries. This one is called the Jack of Hearts. It's part of the playing card series. It's a knave of hearts. Jack's a pickup artist. You see, he's got the broken heart safety matches. He's got the monkey with the bouquet of flowers. There's a couple of chickens there. He's got two girls that are upset. And there's something hidden in those broken heart matches. I always, when I put matches, there's always something hidden inside. can't really see, but inside we have a few Guatemalan worry dolls and a little plastic baby. And that's the broken heart. And of course the coral snake matches the colors of the playing card. This is one of my favorites. I really like that. The Jack of Hearts. And this one is called Homeless. And it's just about being out on the streets. Do you see the little cup there begging for money? and it's cold and the figure is indistinct like we tend to ignore the homeless and you can't quite tell if it's a person holding a child or just one person or what again part of that uncertainty and indistinctness someone wearing a hood holding a little child maybe homeless because when we're homeless we're a little child and this one's called the Northwest Passage several hundred years ago the European explorers were looking for the fabled Northwest Passage from the Atlantic 
to the Pacific. And it was uh, a number of men were lost trying to find it in the middle of the icebergs and the ice and the snow of Canada. And it's about ice and cold, and you can see the cold water and the huge icebergs. And it's about trying to find our own Northwest Passage through life. And frequently we're lost and we're confused, and we know it should be there, but we can't find it. We got two right here. The one on the left is called the decision. And there's a thought bubble in the air, and that's a stylized highway with neon, neon indicators like the dashboard on your car. And frequently, when you make a decision, it's A or B, right or left, yes or no. And neither one is obviously more correct than the other, but we're still faced if we have to turn right or left, we have to go forward or stop, we have to say yes or no. And that's what a lot of life is. And the one on the right is called Waiting for the Sun. And that's a highly stylized version of a, a desert canyon. And you see the early morning yellow sunrise and the red rocks of the desert. And the purple shadows and the green scrub brush waiting for the sun. And here's two more fun ones. These are acrylic on canvas board. The one on the left is called Mr. Bulbhead. And it's just someone with a big bulbous head. And I originally painted it because the paint got out of control, but it's kind of like, you think you got problems, how'd you like to be that guy with a big bulbous head and no face? And that's gotta really be tough. That's kind of funny. And the guy on the right is called Freak Boy, Freak Boy, and it's kind of the village idiot, the imbecile who's always been abused his whole life and taken advantage of. And you can see he's got that scared look on his face. And we can all relate to that at different times. And these two are kind of related. The one on the left is called Forbidden Fruit. And it's based on the uh, Garden of Eden story about the forbidden fruit. And the one on the right is called The Promised Land. And that's based on the Exodus story of looking into the promised land. And we all face the forbidden fruits in our life that we shouldn't partake of. Some people think the original forbidden fruit was an orange. And the promised land is like a field of dry grass in the summertime with the hot sun burning down and you you're looking into it and you're not quite sure how it is, but there it is laying out before you. We got two more here. The one on the right, purple, is called Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams, and it's like landscape on another planet or another world. And the shapes are kind of vaguely reminiscent of tombstones, so it's kind of alludes to the other world passing through the, the veil to the other world. The one on the left is called a flag for a new world order. The flag, of the, the flag of the new world order is based on the idea that all the flags we have have solid areas of color with sharp boundaries demarcating those areas of color. And that's kind of a model of the xenophobic isolationist attitude. It's like us versus them. And we have this, are constantly reminded in our flags of us versus them. Now, for a new world flag, I have the idea of like, if they were not distinct colors, but the colors had all the other colors in them, and the boundaries between the colors were not distinct, then maybe we would be less likely to go to war. Maybe we would be less xenophobic and more accepting of how we're all similar to each other with just slight variations. And so this is an idea for a, a new world flag that you could do a whole lot of variations of. And instead of having solid fields of color with sharp edges, you'd have indistinct areas of color with all the other colors inside of them to promote world peace. And this painting on the right is called the red zone. And this is done in oils. And it's kind of like the edge of the universe. Uh, it's also a gestalt painting of just a background. And I really like that oils have a nice texture to them. And you can see that red line across the middle.
kind of separating this universe from the next. And this one's called Oh Happy Day. It's acrylic on canvas board and it's just bright primary colors in a pleasing way. And that's about it. It's just a very simple painting, simple joy of life. Here's another simple painting called Tapestry. Just kind of another abstract background called tapestry. Maybe it's a tapestry from the future, some magical type of cloth. Here's an acrylic on canvas board. This is called Rock House. And a number of years ago, when I was living in Venice, some neighbors had a party with a band, and the band just rocked. And they were so good playing kind of rock and roll blues instrumental jams that they played till two or three in the morning and no one complained. And that's what this painting is about. It's just a fun time uh, being up in the middle of the summer, late at night, listening to great music. And this is acrylic on canvas boards called After the Bandages. After the Bandages. Uh, paint another Halloween painting and you can kind of see it's like a mummy the heads all wrapped in bandages some traumatic event and this painting I actually use on the cover of one of my CDs it's called the magic hat the magic hat and the character you're not sure whether he's smiling but his eyes are wide open and he's kind of threatening, but at the same time, it's all kind of fun, because balloons are fun. The magic hat. And this painting is called Bill's Tomato Soup. And I worked really hard on this one. I worked really hard copying the Campbell's tomato soup can. And it's acrylic on canvas board. And I worked really hard on this one. kind of an homage to Andy Warhol. This one's called the Jack of Diamonds. Jack of Diamonds, the knave of diamonds. And uh, Jack, it's about making money and being rich. You've got to be kind of a knave and con people out of money if you're going to be rich. And he's got a pocket full of diamonds, a pocket full of jewels. But inside the box, diamond match box, there's a fly. Because there's always a fly in the ointment. If you make too much money and you have too much more than someone else, you had to hurt someone to get it. And these two are kind of related. I was out walking one morning on the beach in Venice, early in the morning. I couldn't sleep and got up really early. And I found these three stones and those two pieces of wood. And they're each archetypical arrangements. I've done similar ones. The one on the left, the three stones, is called Cyclops. And it's the uh, Masonic symbol of the eye on top of the pyramid, Cyclops. Or a stylized snowman, I guess. And the one on the right is called Scarecrow. And that's the wooden cross that's been disassembled. And you can no longer hang anyone on it. But if you put those pieces together, you'll get the Scarecrow. I met Pete a couple weeks ago and he inspired me to get all my paintings out of storage and put them out here, get a little air, take them for a walk, and uh, hopefully sell a few of them. But if nothing else, it's been fun being out here and you should stop by sometime. These paintings are all available on my Etsy shop, E-T-S-Y. Uh, and the shop is called Was57. So www.etsy.com and the shop is Was57, W-A-S-5-7. And you can see them all there um, or stop by sunset sometime if I happen to come back, which I hope to do this summer. Thank you.